Do you want to know the secret technique to extract colors from one image and just apply it on the other? Well, I'm so sorry to tell you that there isn't one. Most of the times we have to use our common sense. Now I know that we have created videos on techniques to simply copy colors using curves, using the three points, and all of those techniques are fantastic. But the thing is, there is no one technique that works with every image. Every image is a challenge. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the common sense that you can use to easily go through this color matching process so that no matter what is thrown at you, you can use your logic to move up the steps and get the results you want. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you my friend already know what to do. Check the links in the description. So this is the image that we're going to be color grading and this is our reference. Now the very first thing, very first common sense thing to do is to just make a copy and paste it alongside. Press Ctrl or Command A to select all, Ctrl or Command C to copy and just simply paste it right here. Ctrl or Command V. You already knew that, just keep it at the side just like this. You can also extend the canvas, it's up to you. Now at first glance, it might just seem only the colors are different and we can use one of those crazy techniques to match the color. But if you take a step back and look at the overall big picture, you will notice that the whole composition and the lighting Everything is different. Most of the light is from the back and there's a little bit of fill light filling up the subject. Also, let's take a look at the background and the subject. There is a stark difference. The subject is much brighter than the background. But in this case, the subject is very similar to the background in brightness. So let's first fix the brightness and the contrast issues. So to remove all the colors from distracting us, let's create a luminosity check layer. And how do we do that? Simply create a solid color adjustment layer at the top. Choose gray, black, white, anything that doesn't have any saturation. Hit OK and change the blend mode from normal to color. Now all of those colors are gone. Now the first thing we notice is the contrast between the subject and the background. So it would be wise to target the subject and the background separately. Let me give you a tip. To select the subject, you can use a more accurate technology in the later versions of Photoshop. Just select any of these selection tools, object selection, quick selection or magic wand and at the top next to select subject, just click on that arrow, choose cloud and click on select subject. It does a much better job of selecting the subject. Now with the selection active, let's create a curves adjustment layer and let's create one more curves adjustment layer. Just make a copy of that. With the curves adjustment layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J. And in this, select the mask and then press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask. And this is for the subject and this one is for the background. Let's work with the background first. The first thing we match is the highlights. In this case, it is the sky. You can use the hand right there. It makes it very easy. The reference is just next to it. Just click on the sky and bring it down and stop at the point where it matches and it pretty much matches. Now behind the subject, these areas are very dark. So let's bring them down as well. Let's create a point right here. Simply bring them down to the point where it looks all right to you. Now it's time for us to work on the subject. You would notice that the subject is not as bright. So let's come to the subject curves adjustment layer. And also we're going to use the hand right here. And actually, we can take the brightest point and just bring it down. Now, do keep in mind the skin tones of both of these subjects are different. We don't have to create an exact match for skin tones. Also, the hair color is different. So just keep in mind the overall feel of the image rather than particular areas. Now, you would also notice that the ground on which the subject is standing is a little brighter. So let's make it brighter. It is in the background. So let's select the background. And in this layer, we are basically making everything darker. So let's remove the darkness away from the bottom. And how do we do that? Select the gradient tool right here. And let's choose a gradient from foreground to transparent inside of the basics and set the foreground color to black and simply drag in a gradient. There you go, but that's too much. Let's do something like this. That's a little better. We are already so close, isn't it? Also, you can add your own style to it. These areas are completely losing details. You can add a little bit of fade by taking the leftmost point up. There you go. That's nice. Now, if you want to take it a step further, look at the sky. It is seeping in. So let's create something for it as well. Create one more curves adjustment layer. And this time, we're just going to take the leftmost point and take it up. Just focus on this area. It needs to match with that of the image. And now, select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, choose a gradient, and you can choose a regular gradient. And let's drag in white to black. That's it. You can always tweak this. Let's bring it to the side and we can just tweak the seepingness nature of it. You can also use the brush tool up to you, but it just takes it up a notch. See how we are using the common sense, looking at the image, looking at what's missing and just 
taking action for it. Let me quickly name the list so that you can keep track of what's happening. Now I would highly recommend that you go ahead and take a break and then get back to your image. After all, you need to stand between work, otherwise it's not good for health anyway. And when you do get back, you will realize what you thought was amazing is not amazing anymore. And you might need to make some changes. In this case, I feel the subject needs a little more dimension. Let's open up the subject curves adjustment layer by double clicking right here. And let's make the highlights a little brighter. Have a look at the reference. The highlights are brighter, relatively. So let's make the highlights brighter like this and make these areas darker. Use the hand and just click and drag it down. But then again, these areas need to be a little brighter as well. Now that looks better than before. That is why breaks are essential. So now that we have taken care of the brightness and the contrast and they look almost identical, let's take care of the color. First of all, let's turn off the luminosity check layer. And by the way, this is a good time to market the Piximperfect compositing panel. If you want to do anything in compositing, although this video is not about compositing, all of those techniques that we have talked about in hundreds of compositing videos, you will find a shortcut to it right here. For example, creating a check layer as well. So if you wanted to create a brightness check layer, just click on it and it does the exact same thing. And you can just click on it to deactivate it and it gets deleted. And if you wanna create a brightness check layer and adjust something based on it, just activate it, create a new adjustment layer by clicking on this and it will create a curves adjustment layer. Now it is creating a clipped layer because this panel is for compositing and we are targeting the subject. If you are creating a saturation check layer and click on this button, it will create a hue saturation adjustment layer. So everything related to compositing, you'll find it right here. If you want to check out the Bix Imperfect compositing panel, check the links in the description. Back to the project, we just turned off the luminosity check layer. You can even delete it. Now to match the colors again, take a step back and look at the entire image. If we try to match the color by simply creating a curves adjustment layer, it just won't work because there's a lot of colors here. And if you look at this image, there is one single warm tone going through the entire image. Even if I try to color it with curves, it will just jumble up everything else. So let's say I wanted to make these hills yellow. So I would have to go to blues, decrease the blues using the hand right here, and then go to greens, decrease the greens, and then maybe go to reds, do something, and then go to RGB, make them brighter. And as I try to do this, you will notice that everything else is also changing color. So as I told you, every image is different and not one technique will work all the time. Really, the simplest thing that we can do is just take a step back and think. We need to color it in such a way that it's actually coloring the image in a uniform tone and not so much affecting the subject. So how do we do that? Gradient maps. Let's take away the curves and create a gradient map. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose gradient map. And we need to create a map of these colors right here. So single click right here. The color on the right hand side will color the highlights and that is why the sky is black right here. And the color on the left hand side will color the shadows. So let us sample these colors and apply it right here. So select the slider on the right and then you can pick colors using this or just double clicking on the slider. Right now if you try to pick colors, it is not picking anything but only white. Why is it happening? Well, let's hit cancel for now. It is happening because the mask is selected and the mask is all white. Adobe really needs to fix this. I've been asking for this for years. I don't know why the default is always a mask. We have to make sure that the symbol of the adjustment layer is selected and then try sampling. Click on the right slider. Let's sample the bright colors like this. Also make sure that sample all layers is checked. Otherwise, it won't sample from top layers. You can also keep the sample size at 3x3 or 5x5 average so that you don't accidentally sample a noise pixel. So for the highlights, let's pick this color. That seems to be about right. The brightness is 83. Remember that. And let's set the location of this slider to 83. There you go. For the left hand side, single click and let's pick this color. Take a look. The brightness is at 23. Hit OK. And we're going to place it at 23. Now this is just a rule of thumb. Now here, let's pick a darker color like this one or this one right here. So let's create one more slider by simply clicking here. And let's pick this color right here. We'll also try this color as well. Brightness 9, hit OK. So let's set it to 9. We can actually move it a little bit to the left as well, just to have a smoother transition. And now let's pick a lighter color, like this one. Let's create another slider right here. Let's pick this color. This is at 71, 72. Let's keep it at 72. Now you can sample as many colors as you like. So I'm going to create one more right here. This is just fun to do. And this is at 46. Hit OK. 46. It was actually accurate. And again, to have a smoother transition, let's take the rightmost slider to the right as well. This seems about right. You can always make changes to it. And now it is the moment of truth. Let's zoom out and take a look. Yes, it is matching. But we only wanted to match the colors and that's it. So change the blend mode from normal 
to color. And again, that's too much. Let's decrease the opacity to about 72. Also, we didn't want it so much on the subject. So how do we take it away? You already have a mask of the subject right here. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag and drop it right here. Replace, yes, we want just the opposite of it. Control or Command I. We also want a little bit on the subject. So decrease the density of the mask. So with the mask selected, open up the properties. If you cannot see the properties, go to window and then make sure properties is checked. It is just like opacity for the mask. So let's decrease it to about 50%, round figure. And there you go. But it does have a little bit punch to it. You know what gives an image a little warm punch in Photoshop? Our favorite, crisp warm. Again, we are just using logic. This is not a technique. If you notice that you're missing something and if you know what fills that gap, just do it. This is not the only way to do it. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup. And let's go ahead and choose crisp warm. And it instantly, instantly brings it closer. Let's decrease the opacity. We don't want that much. About 40% is fine. Now tell me what you want to do. Now, if in the background, you want a little more yellowness right here, you can go to the background right here, go to blues, and then try bringing it down, see what it does. Let's go to green and bring that down as well and we are getting similar colors. Now you can try a little bit of reds and then go to RGB and try to balance that a bit. There you go. It's even more matching. Now you can just go on and on if you think the dress she's wearing is a little too yellow. You can just create a mask right here and mask it out. For example, select the gradient map adjustment layer, press Ctrl or Command G and create a mask. That way you have two masks of the same adjustment layer so that you don't disturb this mask. And now you can take a brush Black is the foreground color and get the colors back. There you go. You can even brighten this a little bit. Again, so many options, so many things you can do. Also, if you want the colors back on the flower, you can get that. If you want proper colors on the lipstick, that is also possible. Now I know the masking is not proper right here. You can take the time to improve it later. But for right now, you can just paint this black and get the lip color. There you go, my friend. This is crazy, crazy matching. Now you can take the time to improve the masks or create better masks in the first place. So that's how you can use logic and common sense to look at the big picture and fill in the missing gap. Let us take a look at the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. Now, if you're new to Photoshop, this might look a little challenging for you, but please don't worry. Just focus on learning the concept, the techniques, and then when it comes to the approach of Photoshop, this is how we should approach Photoshop. We should not memorize the steps or memorize particular technique and stand by it. Of course, it's okay to learn them and you should learn different ways of doing things in Photoshop, but the approach should always be what you want and how you want to achieve it. And that's what makes you a unique artist. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I'd like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.